you're not going to make it in space. I said, no. Look, just because you're a child of Mother Nature, it doesn't mean she has to love you. She can pull you below an event horizon, never to be seen by a living soul again. She can slam a mountain into you at 10,000 miles per hour, smashing you into dust. She can bore you to death, forcing you to spend eon after endless eon just to hop to the next star system. She can even microwave you, literally cook you with microwaves. She can dose you with so much radiation that if you're supremely lucky, you'll only get aggressive cancer. She can... you get the idea. Space is nasty. It's a rough universe out there, and I'm surprised that anybody, let alone you, would want to explore it. Sure, it's full of wonders. Lacy tendrils of gas stretching for light years. Stellar explosions that can be seen from across the universe. Dead and decaying stars filled with matter in the strangest of states. The list goes on. A beautiful and wonderful cosmos, full of colors, motion, and vitality. Staggeringly big, room enough for everyone, full of enough surprises and mysteries to satisfy generations worth of curiosity seekers. Lured by the wonders, eager young explorers go out ill-equipped and unprepared. They go off to hunt for the strange, the unique, the exotic. To dance through nebulae and surf on waves of gravity. To attempt to fathom the most closely held secrets of nature. To go and go and go, never looking back. Hundreds of billions of stars in every galaxy. Hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. They go to see the stars. Factories of fusion, fountains of creation, watchful guardians of the deep. They go to see the nebulae, tombs of the fallen, birthplaces of light, forges of the elements. They go to see the unseeable, whispers of distant collisions, secrets written in strange matter, the great expanse of nothing. They go to see the extreme, gateways to new universes, artifacts of the ancient cosmos, a new friend. They go to see, to explore, to study, to observe, to witness. They meet their ends much too soon. Caught in the gravitational pull of a black hole, struck by a rogue comet, blasted with radiation from the outburst on the surface of a star. Tragedies, all of them, senseless and unnecessary. So here I am. My first priority is to warn you off the whole escapade altogether. Find a planet, find a rock, call it home. Raise a farm, raise some kids. You can't get rid of all the dangers in your life, but you sure can avoid the most obvious ones. Put some dirt under your feet and some air over your head. Get yourself a nice steady star with billions of years left of heat and light and warmth, and a nice steady planet with plenty of liquid water. Get a hobby, and get your mind off space. Buy a telescope. Enjoy it from afar. But... You're not going to listen to me, are you? You're going to go there, aren't you? You're not like the others. You're not the stupid one or the ignorant one or the lazy one. You'll be clever and watchful and careful. You'll come back home with tales of wonder and awe. You think you have one up on Mother Nature, don't you? Just remember that she has a few billion years of experience. So, second priority. If you're not going to stay put, I might as well tell you about some of the dangers you'll be facing. I'll assume you've solved the simple stuff, like how to actually get up into space, how to bring enough food and water and air with you, and how to navigate and travel. That's all just engineering problems, really, and not my department. My department is physics. Astrophysics. That means figuring out how stuff works up in space. And I'll be spilling a lot of astrophysics all over your nice, clean, new dreams. What I'm writing represents the latest scientific knowledge acquired from decades, and in some cases centuries, of research from Earth scientists. That means that a good chunk of it is right, but some of it might be wrong. That's just the way it is. I recommend treating everything I say as the gospel truth, at least for safety's sake. You can never be too careful out there in the void. I'll hit the most obvious dangers and a few lesser known second stringers. There are, of course, more threats out there, and as smart as I am, I'm not omniscient. That's just the way the universe works, pal. Most importantly, and I can't say this strongly enough, I will not be held liable for any inaccuracies, mistakes, or incomplete knowledge in the following pages. I will, of course, strive to minimize all such things, but nobody's perfect. Even me. Travel at your own risk. 
If I say a star in a particular stage of evolution should be stable for another million years and instead it goes supernova, don't blame me, blame physics. The universe is a complicated place, and the physics I'm about to describe isn't always simple. I don't know how far you'll get or what you'll eventually encounter in your adventures. Our universe is in a constant state of flux, a big, messy existence. Things will catch you off guard. The cosmos will surprise you. You have been warned. So let us begin. Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Approaching vacuum. Spaced. Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Vacuum seal intact. Incoming asteroid. Collision. Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Vacuum seal intact. Asteroid avoided. Incoming cosmic rays. Classification U Hecker. Radiated. Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Vacuum seal intact, asteroid avoided, cosmic rays dodged, approaching nebulae. Turbulence achieved. Pulverized. Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. 3, 2, 1, blast off, vacuum seal intact, asteroid avoided, cosmic rays dodged, nebulae course changed, nearby star going supernovae. <laughs> Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Vacuum seal intact. Asteroid avoided. Cosmic rays. Dodge nebulae course change. Supernova course change. Approaching magnetar. Dissolve. Would you like to try again? Explorer ready. Three, two, one, blast off. Vacuum seal intact. Asteroid avoided. Cosmic rays. Dodge nebulae course change. Supernova course change. Magnetar course avoided. Only one course option available. Incoming black hole. Game over. The Galactic Core. They go, lured by the lights, the sounds, the action. Billions of stars crammed into a central bulge, hustling and bustling in their lives. Complicated physics, radiation, magnetic fields, nothing like the sleepy, dopey suburbs of the galactic disk in our home system. Do you know the origin of the term siren song? It's a Greek myth. This group of creatures known as the Sirens would hang out near some rocks, singing sweetly to any passing sailors. But it was more than just a pleasant melody. Their tones would make them irresistible to the sailors, who would be seduced beyond reason, lured by the music. The sailors, spellbound, would steer their ship to attempt to get as close as possible to the Sirens, crashing onto the rocks. And then the Sirens would eat the sailors. And I'm telling you now, there's a menacing beast in the heart of our galaxy, ready to eat you if you get too close. A dark heart in an otherwise brilliant galaxy. It will sing to you sweetly. You can hear its song from light years away. Sail too close and you'll feel the compulsion, the need, to get closer and explore further. Who knows what you might find deep in the heart? What new physics awaits you? What brilliant panoply of fantastic forces and particles? 
You'll want to party at the core, spending a lifetime exploring its mysteries. But this lurking nightmare will consume you in a flash, whole, alive, picking your bones apart before you even had a chance to notice that it's too late. This creature is nothing like those puny stellar mass black holes that roam in the interstellar wastelands. Those are ants, flies compared to this beast. No, this is something far larger, far older. It has been feeding for millions, even billions of years. An ancient terror. Almost as old as the universe itself. It was here when our Milky Way galaxy first formed, and it will remain even after all the billion suns have been extinguished. Our entire galaxy is anchored on this black horror. It's quiet now, slumbering for at least a hundred million years. In the past, when it was awake, the galaxy quaked and trembled in bouts of fire and rage, a tempest so fierce that stars themselves stopped forming. For now, we are safe from its wrath, but should this dragon be provoked, it will spit its fire for a million light years. There, buried in the deepest parts of our galaxy, surrounded by retinues of small black holes and a host of giant stars, is the beast itself. We humans are not meant to be there, not made for such extremes. It's there, in the heart, where a massive creature of pure gravity and malevolence sits and hates, reminding us of our own cosmic insignificance. I almost dare not speak its name, but I must, to warn you of what you might encounter should you travel inward. I speak of gravity. I speak of blackness. I speak of infinities. I speak of the unknown. I speak of the void. The dead center at the dead center of the galaxy. I speak of Sagittarius A star, a supermassive black hole.